The Platform is a 2019 Spanish Netflix film about, well, a platform. Prisoners are held on levels in a vertical tower, and a platform with food is lowered each day. This means that the first levels get to eat as much as they'd like, and the lower levels are left to pick through their leftovers if they're lucky. The director wanted to make a social and political statement with a harsh criticism of capitalism, the need for greater equality, and the banes of power. But the film's TLDR message can be boiled down to we live in a society. Watching the film, I couldn't help but think that there are many things the main character, Gorang, didn't explore. Like, for example, doing nothing. I'm serious, the main character would have survived if he did nothing at all. That's it, everyone go home. I'd like to thank my OnlyFans members, and uh, don't worry, the Spread Eagle shots should be up by next week. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been The Ham Barrel. What we're actually going to do is consider this film's scenario more generally. Because the main character would have survived if he did nothing, we're going to look at solutions that could work for anyone who enters the facility. But to do that, I need to explain just what is the deal with this platform. That way, you can see how I came to my solutions, and you can come up with your own too. So let's jump into it. Prisoners are held in the Vertical Self-Management Center, otherwise known as the Pit. Each level is comprised of a large concrete room with two beds, a sink, which gives a water supply, a mirror, and a toilet. At the very top level, chefs prepare the food and place it on the platform. Once a day, the platform lowers from the topmost level to the lowest. As such, the highest levels have much more food available to them than the lower levels. As the platform descends and each level of prisoners eats their fill, eventually the platform runs out of food entirely, and the prisoners go hungry. So how do the lower levels survive at all with no food? Well, every month, the entire facility is filled with knockout gas, and each prisoner is randomly assigned to a new level. Most people can survive 30 days without food, so as long as they don't get lower levels two months in a row, a prisoner is able to get enough food. On each level, there are two prisoners. They're assigned to the same random level every month, but if one of the prisoners dies before the end of the month, then the surviving prisoner will be assigned a new partner, either a prisoner that survived the last month or a new arrival. Each month, Month, the levels are filled with new prisoners to replace those that died the previous month. To prevent prisoners from hoarding or saving food, if anyone takes food from the platform but doesn't eat it immediately, their level will increase or decrease in temperature incrementally until the food is thrown down the pit. If the food is never returned, then the prisoners on the level will eventually either freeze to death or be incinerated. There is one exception, however. On the very lowest level of the pit, Gorang, the main character, keeps food on this level, but the room doesn't heat up or cool down. But we are quickly going to ignore this exception, because it only occurs to help the film's message that we do indeed live in a society. You know, we're living in a society! But it's otherwise incongruent with the rest of the film. At this point, you may have figured out that the odds of survival completely depend on how many levels there are in the pit. The more levels there are, the more people there are to feed, and the greater chance you'll be put on a level without enough food. The film the film suggests that everyone above level 50 gets enough food to eat for the month, and any level below that will starve. So what are the odds of being on a level below 50 for two months in a row? It takes the characters of the film some time to figure it out, but in total there are 333 levels in the facility. That means there are 666 people in the pit at the beginning of the month. <laughs> the devil number. <laughs> blah, blah. <laughs> Hail Satan. Am I right, fellow Satanists? I do hope his eyes gaze upon me and that my allegiance is recognized. I don't know. Notice me, senpai! Notice me! If we use some simple probability, we find that there is an 85% chance you'll be placed below level 50 each month, and a staggering 98% chance that you'll be placed below level 50 for two months in a row. Therefore, it's a statistical certainty that whoever enters the pit will starve to death before they're let out, if they subsist only on the food provided to them. In retrospect, the protagonist Gorang got absurdly lucky to find himself above level 50 for three of his six months in the pit. Now let's talk about the prisoners themselves. Some are actual inmates of the judicial system, but it's also possible to enter the facility of your own volition, and in exchange, the administration will give you something in return for participating. In Gorang's case, he volunteered to enter the pit for six months, and in exchange, the organization would give him a diploma. Each prisoner is allowed to bring one item with them into the pit, and it can literally be anything. 
anything. It can be a knife, a blow up pool, even a dog. This dude clearly didn't get the memo as to what he was getting himself into because he brought a fucking surfboard. There is no limit to the item you can bring with you, though assumedly you need to supply the item yourself. If you don't survive, your item will be removed from the pit at the end of the month. Otherwise, prisoners would be able to hoard the items of anyone they murder. The last kindness bestowed to the prisoners is that their favorite food will be placed on the platform each day. Lastly, we will try to beat the platform using all available knowledge because it's clear that some, not all, but some of the prisoners were well aware of what they were signing up for. Barat, for example, brought a rope in the hopes of climbing the levels, and many others brought weapons. We will attempt to survive for six months, the same as Garang, but any duration longer than two months isn't really significantly different. Hi, I'm a shuman, just a regular human, heading to my favorite coffee shop. And when I'm using public Wi-Fi, I always make sure to use, uh, yeah, hi, I'll, I'll have a macchiato and uh, one small mermaid, please. And what do you mean you don't sell mermaids? Then why is your logo a mermaid? I was very looking forward to eating a mermaid. And when I'm using public Wi-Fi, I always make sure to use Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a fast and easy to use virtual private network that puts my mind at ease when I use online banking to see how much I have to shell out to overpriced non-mermaid selling coffee shops. And while I wait, I can watch US-based content on Netflix because Surfshark lets you get around your country's locked regional content with server locations in 65 countries. And best of all, when I want to switch over to my laptop laptop to work on my novel, which is very easy for me because I'm a human with fingers, Surfshark lets you use unlimited devices with a single subscription. I use it on my phone, laptop, even my game console. You can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash filmherald and enter the promo code filmherald for 83% off and three extra months for free. And if you're still not convinced in the first 30 days, you can get a full refund. The first solution is to become a cannibal. Not particularly creative, but hear me out. The movie heavily features cannibalism as a side effect of the starvation that occurs on the lower levels. We also know that cannibalism works because the main character Gorang and his partner Trimagasi both survive for a month at a time on the lower levels using this method. However, I don't feel like either of them truly committed to the art of cannibalism. I personally recommend watching Silence of the Lambs on repeat for about 40 hours and that should get you in the right head space. So how exactly do you survive as a cannibal? I believe it comes down to the item you bring with you, and the best item you can bring as a cannibal is a collapsible ladder. Barad was on the right track when he brought a rope into the pit in the hopes of scaling the levels to reach the top. But what we're going to do is bring a ladder to murder the people above and below our level. The plan is to wait for evening so that they're asleep, wedge the ladder between the hole and the floor, and then kill the occupants on the level above. We saw in the film that you don't actually need to bring a weapon with you into the pit because you can just make a weapon out of the bed frame that's provided or make a knife from one of the dishes on the platform. All right, so we have a food source, but won't it spoil over the course of a month? Almost certainly. And in this scenario, we have two options. If we're at a high enough level where there's even a morsel of food left on the platform, we can remove the food from the platform and place it on the level with the bodies and then ride the platform down to our level again. Theoretically, because food was stolen on that level, it should either heat up or freeze. So the bodies will either be cooked for us or they'll be frozen and preserved. Either way, we're able to stay alive for the month on a gross but sustainable food supply. And if this doesn't work, well then we still have a ladder and we can still scale the facility at night and find more people to eat. Of course, there are some problems to this plan. First, this all becomes a lot easier if you have a partner who's willing to cooperate with you. They can hold the ladder for you to make sure it's secure or help you to kill your victims. However, if they're not cooperative, this gets a whole lot harder. As we saw with Gorang, waking up second on a lower level could be fatal if they decide to eat you. Additionally, because you decided to bring a ladder instead of a weapon, you will have a difficult time defending yourself if your partner suddenly decides to fight to the death. It may be possible to get around this problem, however. 
one pair of prisoners calls each other honey and baby. This implies that you may be able to enter the pit as a twosome, and if so, you can happily cooperate with your partner. Second, if you try to scale the ladder and your breakfast is awake, then you're in trouble, because if they manage to kick the ladder down, you'll almost certainly fall to your death. Another version of this solution is to simply ride the platform down the pit, kill anyone you find, eat them, and then ride the platform again once you run out of edible food, searching for more victims. In that case, bringing a dedicated weapon with you makes the most sense. The only other solution that's possible, as far as I can tell, is to attempt to escape the facility. In the film, Gorang and others attempt to ration the food out equally among the prisoners, but they later discover that rationing, whether through the goodwill of your fellow prisoners or through the threat of violence, makes no difference in the end because there are simply too many mouths to feed and not enough food to go around. So if we forego cannibalism, what other option is there to survive? At the end of the film, the young girl rides the platform to the top in the hopes that those in charge will shut down the facility when they see that innocent people are suffering due to their actions. But I say, screw the girl. Wait, no, 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 that's not what I meant. No, wait, 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 wait. What I meant was, don't bring the girl to the top. Bring everyone to the top. We know that statistically, it's almost impossible to survive for two months once you've been sent to a lower level of the pit. Therefore, there are a lot of hungry and desperate people that we can use to storm the kitchens at the top level. I propose that we try to convince as many people as possible to join us on the platform, bring weapons, ride it to the top, and then pilfer the kitchens above. We see in the film that the top level isn't guarded in any way, so it'll be an easy escape. The only real downside is that if we enter the facility voluntarily in order to earn a diploma, storming the kitchens would probably void that agreement. But hey, it's better than eating some guy's butt for the next few months. Riding the platform to the top is almost certainly the best way to survive the pit. But if you disagree and you think that you have a better idea, please let us all know about it in the comments, and I'll review the best solutions in the next edition of comments versus movie villains. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been the Film Herald.